My dear brothers and sisters, I've just given a, a, a brief, the title of my reflection is, uh, A Holy Curiosity Has Power to Lead Us to God. A Holy Curiosity Has the Power to Lead Us to God. And of course, what we have in the reading is a curiosity that didn't lead somebody to God, as we'll be hearing. As uh, you are, I've shared here, we are preparing this travel to go or uh, pilgrimage to the Holy Land of Israel the month, next month. And uh, every time I'm reading the Bible, I'm wondering where did this happen? Where, where is the location of this kind of story? What we just heard from the gospel is a story that happened in the northern side of the kingdom of, 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 of Judea. So the whole land had been divided. There was the southern kingdom, and then there was the one that was in the north, where the temple is, and that's where we have Galilee, and we have Judea, and all of those places. And that is the region that was ruled by the Herodian dynasty. And we remember there was this man called Herod the Great who died in the year 4 BC. And he had been the ruler of that whole area. When he died, the whole of his kingdom was divided into four pieces. And one of the Herods took one piece and was the ruler of one of those four pieces. So that's how we have the Tetrarchs. A Tetrarch is one who rules one, one of those four pieces. So today we have this uh, Tetrarch, Herod Antipas, who was the ruler of that area of Galilee and Perea, and uh, he's the one who came, he's the man also who, who murdered John the Baptist. And it's during this time that he, he heard that there was another new preacher who had come into town. And he was uh, some man from Nazareth who was preaching and was performing a lot of miracles. And he became so curious, who is this one? John the Baptist already killed, and people are saying this is uh, another new man who had come up. So he kept trying to see who this new preacher was. And he was uh, curious about him. What we see about this Herod Antipas he was that was curious about Jesus, but was not necessarily interested in following him. And I'm playing just with that element of curiosity. God has planted curiosity in all of our hearts. All of us, we have some seeds that he has planted in here, in our hearts. And he did that with the hopes that perhaps our curiosity can be able to lead us to him leading us to knowing him and loving him and serving him. That when we look through nature and look through our own lives and we become curious about what is this that is going on in our lives, hopefully that can be a hook that can be able to lead us deep inside. So God has planted all sorts of signposts all over nature and even in our own lives. Vestiges of his presence everywhere and hopefully, out of curiosity, we can be able to be hooked and led inside into a deeper understanding of him and also an encounter with him. Curiosity can lead us to new discoveries that can improve our own lives and also draw us closer to God. A holy curiosity can also lead us to discovering new truths about God and lead us to changing long-held false perspectives and misconceptions and wrong attitudes that we've lived with for many, many, many years. But it takes us opening ourselves to the Spirit of God and allowing us the Spirit to lead us deeper into God that we can be able to grow and be led closer to God. The challenge is that sometimes we mistake curiosity with a fascination. There are people just are uh, just uh, fascinated about something and they, they think this is some kind of holy curiosity. It isn't. The fascinations are usually very self-centered and they're just sometimes even an ego trip for us. But a holy curiosity is rooted in a desire to know truth. 
a holy curiosity is rooted in that kind of impulse of, I have this desire to know the truth. And then you can be able to let down the road until when you can be able to learn about God himself. As I shared with you at the beginning, I've been preparing this group that is going to the pilgrimage. Part of preparing pilgrims is to help them to understand that there is a difference between a pilgrimage and just a tourist journey. The two, the two are not the same. When you just, we go on a tourist journey, you're just going to visit these places and look at their geography and artifacts and learn something about them just for your own enjoyment and pleasure. A pilgrimage is different. We're going to use geography to find places where God has revealed himself and use those sacred locations and sites to draw into a deep experience with God. So the confusions of the two can be similar to also the confusions that ha happen with uh, fascination and also curiosity. There are those that lead us to God and others are just for our own selves. Today as we continue with our mass, may we ask the Lord to continue to renew a holy curiosity within our hearts. May the spirit of the Lord use our curiosity to lead us to new truths, to new perspectives, to new attitudes, new goals, and pursuits in life that can help us to honor God and also draw closer to him. Amen. <laughs>